What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and as promised, in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing Tapu Coco, Tapu Lele, and Tapu Bulu in the Ultra League, all running their newly introduced signature move, Nature's Madness. And let me tell you, I wasn't expecting to do very well with this team, but these Pokemon are actually really strong against the current meta. Obviously, the team can be taken down by a single Poison type if the opponent plays it right, but outside of Poison, I think this team has very good coverage. Just like the other legendary theme teams that I've run this season, I had so much fun running this team, so with that being said, let's just get into the question of the day. Which legendary Pokemon's signature move would you buff to give it more play in the Go Battle League? Let me know in the comment section down below, and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so heading into the first battle, lead Tapu Koko into Swampert, so obviously an awful lead, gonna say swap into my Tapu Lele, and the opponent comes in with Dragon Breath Giratina, this is a really positive matchup for me, of course, double resisting the Dragon Breath damage, Nature's Madness hits incredibly hard, and as well, we debuff their defense, the opponent goes for Shadow Sneak, that is super effective, but because they're running Dragon Breath, I can just go for the full Astonish farm down, come out with nearly a second Nature's Madness loaded, and we're gonna throw it straight away into the Swampert coming back in, now this is really good for me. The opponent is going to go for a full march of farm down, but assuming they're not running Sludge Wave, I can resist everything. So we'll no shield the first move. They go for Hydro Cannon, and then they swap into Cresselia. Now, of course, I'm going to preserve my Tapu Bulu for that Swampert. We come in with the Tapu Coco, and Tapu Coco, well, actually, just in general, aside from the Tapu Fini, all of the Tapus are quite glassy, but Tapu Coco is the glassiest of this trio. And now we go for Nature's Madness, and I'll be honest here, this was one of the first battles I did. I didn't realize Nature's Madness only costs 50 energy for some reason i had it in my mind that it was 60 energy so i thought thunderbolt being 55 would be cheaper which is why we go for the thunderbolt there it doesn't really make sense to go for thunderbolt but that's okay as we still make it to another nature's madness taking out chrysalia we can swap back into our tapu bulu we still haven't seen that they are running earthquake or sludge wave so we do just safely shield that up go for the grass nut and of course is double super effective up against the swampert it would easily one shot them but the opponent just concedes the match there so GG's to the opponent there, Internet's going to see Dragonite, which is a very positive lead matchup, and just in general, very good for the entire team. The opponent's going to say swap into Jellicent, so core broken by the Tapu Coco. That's absolutely fine with me, they just go for a Surf there, making sure to throw it before I make it to a Charge move. Here I'm going to go for the Thunderbolt, just because I feel like Nature's Madness wouldn't quite take them out there. We do grab a Shield from the opponent, and now we're swapping into our Tapu Bulu. So at this point, I'm going to shield this up here, they full send the Shadow Ball, we can now over farm just slightly, go for a Grass Knot, and this will of course be enough damage to take them out honestly possibly should have gone for the nature's madness there just because uh, we would take them out anyways but the opponent comes in with scone tank that's looking really scary but then they swap back into their dragonite so i go for a slight undercharge there honestly wasn't sure how much damage that would do and i don't want to take them out straight away so what i'm actually going to do here is shield up the superpower then get a slight energy advantage on my tapu lele and then just hope the opponent isn't running sludge bomb because of course sludge bomb gonna hit for super effective damage crunch is just neutral though and that allows me to make it to a nature's madness nature's madness is going to grab the final shield from the opponent and we are just one volt switch away from the next nature's madness on our tapu coco so we're going to come in go for it straight away and this won't quite take them out just yet but it doesn't really matter as tapu bulu also has a nature's madness loaded so we're going to throw it into the skull attack the opponent goes for the poison jab farm down doesn't matter if they threw or not because tapu bulu easily wins cmp in that matchup and with three nature's madness landing on that skull tank i'm able to take out a poison jab user which is very nice for this team now ggs to the opponent there into next battle i'm going to see a tapu coco mirror match which i definitely wasn't expecting to see they go for the nature's madness i do just barely hang on i'm going to fire off my own nature's madness and then if the opponent shields which they do i'm going to swap into my tapu lele now, the opponent's going to massively over farm before coming in with a Pidgeot, but that's fine with me. They give me a significant energy advantage. We go for the Nature's Madness there. We get them into the yellow health range with just Astonish. Now, I don't expect them to full send a Brave Bird. Quite a ballsy call there, but we do call correctly. And that allows me to make it to a Nature's Madness number two. And that doesn't quite take them out after the debuff to our attack, but we're able to simul KO there. And that's great for me, as now we can come in with our Tapu Bulu. And the opponent's final Pokemon is going to be Tapu Fini. And luckily for me... Tapu Bulu is going to very easily beat both a Tapu Fini and a Tapu Coco in the back. We've got the final shield from the opponent. They do just barely outpace me to the next charge move. I'm going to play it safe. They full send the Moonblast. They come back in with 
the Tapu Coco, but this is absolutely fine with me. We can just safely shoot up the Nature's Madness. I am going to overfarm just slightly. Honestly, I couldn't remember how much energy they did overfarm, but it doesn't really matter. Grass Knot takes them out, and I will be able to make it to a second Grass Knot up against the Tapu Fini. It's going to hit full super effective damage. It easily takes out the Tapu Fini, and I'm able to take that game. So GG to the opponent there into the next game, we see Tapu Coco into Drapion. So I'm sure you guys were wondering, what do you do up against a poison in the lead? Well, hopefully just uh, the opponent lets the first move go through, but it's quite unlikely. I'm definitely going to shield the first move. They go for Crunch, which does imply that they are running Sludge Bomb, because otherwise you would go for the neutral Aqua Tail, which of course isn't stabbed, so it wouldn't hit that hard, but it doesn't make sense to go for Crunch there, unless they do have Sludge Bomb. So I'm going to double shield in this matchup, and they are running Sludge Bomb, so we need to get rid of the Drapion here. Of course, uh, Tapu Bulu going to take double super effective damage from the sludge bombs and even the poison stings but unfortunately the opponent will outpace us to the next charge move we're going to have to let the tapu coco go down well, that was a bit of a tongue twister there we're now going to come in with the tapu lele i should be able to live this here go for a charge move but actually that does way more damage than i was expecting and now unfortunately tapu bulu doesn't get the bullet seed farm down they can just fire off a sludge bomb and the opponent is able to fully 1v3 me with a drapion up against the entire tapu team and unfortunately we do lose that game but ggs to that opponent there into next battle we're going to see shadow charizard so a much better lead matchup for me the opponent does farm to a potential blast burn so i will respect the damage the opponent full sends a Blast Burn here. At this point, they're not making it to another Blast Burn, so they swap into their Ampharos. We're going to go straight for Nature's Madness here. Nature's Madness is no shielded. It does big damage. We make it to Nature's Madness number two. Nature's Madness is going to take out the Shadow Ampharos. They come back in with the Charizard, and now it's my turn to 1v3. Well, technically not because the opponent didn't reveal their third Pokemon, but I'm sure it was weak to Tapu Koko, and it is why they conceded. But GG's to that opponent there, and into the next battle, another great lead. lead Leading into Shadow Dragonite, they will just barely outpace us to the first charge move, but that's fine, this will be resisted. It is super power that actually does some decent damage there, but we're going to go straight for a Thunderbolt here. I'm not going to bait here, and the opponent is actually going to shield, so it would have been nice if we did go for Nature's Madness just to debuff their, their defense, but it doesn't really matter here. I'm going to correctly shield up the Shadow Ball. We're going to go for three Astonishes, go for a Side Shock, and if I did get that debuff with the Nature's Madness, I think this would KO, but the opponent shields anyway, so at this point, I'm definitely also going to double shield and then I can go for one extra astonish and that way I can fire off the Psy Shock and then also not take any damage from the extra incinerate. Psy Shock will now take them out there. They come back in with the Shadow Dragonite and I'm able to win CMP up against the Shadow Dragonite. Nature's Madness of course going to hit for super effective damage taking out the Dragonite and then we come in with our Tapu Bulu up against the Ampharos. We're going to completely wall it unless the running power gem which is very unlikely we do wall every other charge move and fast move that Ampharos can throw. So we go for Nature's Madness here. Nature's Madness doesn't deal that much damage, but it drops their defense. The opponent recognizing there's nothing they can do, and they concede the match. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Giratina in the lead. So this is a pretty good matchup for us. But of course, unfortunately, only one Pokemon has super effective fast move damage up against the Giratina. And that's also the Pokemon that takes super effective from Shadow Claw. So it's not as dominant as it might seem. And here we actually swap into our Tapu Lele. I'm going to shield this just because they farmed up a ton of energy. They go for Dragon Claw, which probably implies that they're running Shadow Force. Otherwise, I don't really see a reason to bait in that scenario. So here we go for Nature's Madness. Nature's Madness going to drop their defense. And at this point, I'm just going to let this move go through here. The opponent will be able to take me out with a Hydro Cannon. We can come in with either Pokemon, honestly. I think I'm going to come in with my Tapu Bulu here, just because that will force the opponent to go and full send an Ice Beam. I'm going to shield this up, respect the damage from potential Ice Beam, and the opponent baits with a Hydro Cannon, which isn't ideal, so I'm actually not going to overfarm at all. Honestly, I lost track of their energy, so we go for the Grass Knot straight away, taking them out here, and let's see what the opponent wants to do. They're actually going to come in with a Polyrath, so what I should do here is go for the Grass Knot in neutral situations, or when they're both super effective. Grass Knot is going to hit slightly harder, and the opponent just barely lives there and predicts that they were going to swap at the same time, and unfortunately, they just barely outpaced me. They full send the Shadow Force, so they were running it. Now we need to make it to back-to-back -back charge views because that Polyrath is just one counter away from a potential Icy win. So they do go for the Dragon Claw there, and unfortunately, they do make it to a second Dragon Claw before we cap out at 100 energy. And honestly, Nature's Madness might not have quite taken them out from that range, but GG's to that opponent really well played 
into the next battle, we see a Pidgeot in the lead, and the opponent is core broken by Tapu Koko. They swap into Poliwrath, and I'm thinking it might be a Swampert in the back, so I actually don't come in with my Tapu Bulu. Instead, we come in with the Tapu Lele. They're going to go straight for a Icy Wind, so that's fine with me. I'm going to debuff my attack, but it doesn't do much damage, so of course, I do live it very comfortably. They're definitely not going to be able to counter farm me down. I'm going to shield the next one, though, as that would put me into counter farm down range, but now we're going to go for three Astonishes, go for the Nature's Madness. We've been double debuffed, but we've also debuffed their defense, so it does still take them out from that range. They're going to come back in with the Pidgeot. We are double debuffed, so this Nature's Madness is not going to do an awful lot of damage, but it will debuff their defense and basically force the opponent to swap out straight away. And the boat is going to be running Swampert in the back. So I am very glad that I saved the Tapu Bulu here. I can just safely let this go through. They don't even farm to a potential Sludge Wave, which might actually end up grabbing a shield from me. But now I can just over farm massively in this matchup. They go for a second Hydro Cannon. And what this is going to do is put me into farm down range for that Pidgeot. But it doesn't really matter. We go for the Grass Knot, taking out the Swampert. I tried to get a little bit of extra farm there, but it still takes them out with that Undercharge. We go for Nature's Madness, dealing big damage to the Pidgeot. And we can tank any one charge move. That throw so i'm gonna no shield the first the opponent is going to full send the brave bird it is resisted it still hits like a truck but i'm able to take them out with the volt switch damage and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there, into next game we see another poison type in the lead, but this time it is Galar and Weezing, and typically they're not going to be running Sludge, so it's not too bad for us, but they could be running Play Rough or uh, Overheat, so we're going to shield, unfortunately they bait with a Brutal Swing, honestly I felt like that was pretty obvious, but there is a chance that they go for Overheat and then dip into one of their Pokemon in the back, so I did just respect the damage there, at this point I feel like they are just going to full send the nuke and they go for the Overheat, but I do correctly shield it up this time, so now we go for another Nature's Madness, honestly should have just gone for Thunderbolt at this point because the opponent no shields they will make it to another overheat but they are debuffed in their attack by two stages so it doesn't quite take us out there and I'm still going to be able to make it to a Thunderbolt up against the gelatin coming in you could argue that I should go for Nature's Madness here to debuff their defense but it doesn't really matter at this point we have put them into range where by the time we make it to a Grass Knot that should be enough damage to take out the gelatin so at this point we are going to see the opponent full sense of Shadow Ball we're going to go straight for a Grass Knot here no messing around Grass Knot will be enough damage like I mentioned to take out the Jellison but they've got Mandibuzz in the back and I swap out straight away that might be a mistake there as the opponent will now be able to go for a Dark Pulse Dark Pulse dealing over half our health there with the Snarl damage and they will outpace me to the next charge as well because Astonish unfortunately whilst it has had several buffs recently still doesn't generate energy that quickly so the opponent can correctly over farm in this matchup full sending Dark Pulse number two and they will be able to make it to an Airy Lace up against my Tapu Bulu and of course it hits for super effective damage it will be taking me out from that range and unfortunately we do lose that game but I think if I stayed in with my Tapu Bulu, went straight for Nature's Madness there, and maybe if the opponent threw on CMP there, then we could have won that game, but also it still would have been a bit tricky, as then the opponent would have overfarmed. But into the next battle, we see another Poison type in the lead. This time we can at least hit for super effective damage back in return with the Volt Switch and the Thunderbolt. We bait with the Nature's Madness. It doesn't really matter there, as I think we still make it to Thunderbolt anyways, but we are going to full send it this time around, taking out the Tentacruel, and now I'm going to swap straight away into my Tapu Lele. The opponent isn't swapping out here, of course, the worst this could be is a Moon Blast. They actually just go for a Grass Knot, so probably running Grass Knot and Future Sight. We're going to overfarm here. Honestly, didn't really need to. The earlier we throw Nature's Madness, the better, as it debuffs their defense. So... Obviously, we deal more damage with the Astonishes, but it doesn't really matter. Grass Knot will be taking us out. We are now going to wait out our Switch Clock here and then come in with the Tapu Bulu. And the opponent's going to swap into a Guzzlord. And unfortunately for them, we completely hard wall them. So they just concede the match there. Well, I guess they could have, been, could have been running Sludge Bomb, but we still had a shield anyway. So, GG's to the opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Skeledurge in the lead. And I'm going to be honest, Skeledurge caused me all sorts of problems, especially in the lead. I swear, every time I shielded, it was Disarming Voice. And the one time I let the move go through, it was a Shadow Ball. So, yeah, definitely not ideal. We're going to go for a bait here, and we do at least grab a shield back from the opponent. They will outpace me to the next charge move. And worse is that also, from this range, Disarming Voice will now take us out. But obviously these Astonishes are going to deal some pretty decent damage in this matchup. So I'm definitely going to shield if the opponent throws a charge move. But they don't. They swap into Ampharos. And honestly, I shouldn't have thrown here. I should have saved the energy. Then come in with my Tapu Bulu. I am able to successfully catch the charge move. And like I've mentioned already, we do completely wall them. Unless they are running Power Gem, which they're not going to be. But here the opponent's farming up a ton of energy. I should have just committed to the Bullet Seed farm down. But I didn't want to get hit by either a Zap Cannon or a Focus Blast. Because Tapu Bulu is pretty glassy. And honestly, even 
resisted, I think that probably would have taken us out there. I might be wrong though, so correct me in the comments if it wouldn't take me out there. But either way, we are going to no shield this. The opponent goes for disarming voice. We come in with our Tapu Lele, and unfortunately they've got Jellison in the back. Now, of course, we are hitting for super effective damage with the Astonishes, but I would have preferred either Tapu Coco or Tapu Bulu to be in this matchup because, of course, they're also hitting for super effective damage with the Hex, and they can just put me into range where even a Surf will be enough damage to take us out there. We still get outpaced as well, so Surf will be taking out the Tapu Lele, and unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to the opponent there into the next game, a much better lead matchup for us as we lead into Talonflame. Now, the awkward thing about Tapu Koko, or just any four turn fast move user up against a five turn fast move user, is actually perfect timing for the opponent to just throw a flame charge straight away. So, here we're going to go for the Nature's Madness Bay. I realize that they're probably going to shield, and they do end up shielding, which is good news for me. And at this point, we can just go and shield this up. I will be able to go for a full Volt Switch farm down before the next Incinerate registers as well, though, which is really nice for me. We've got a lot of energy. I'm going to go for that Nature's Madness straight away, and hopefully we can make it to another charge move here, but it's going to be very close, and we just barely don't get there. Now, if they're running Ice Beam, this is quite scary, but they are going to over farm here, and they're not going to throw, so this pretty much indicates they're not running Ice Beam. They swap into Gallade, and this is perfectly fine. We can just pretty much wall them. They actually go for Synchronize there, so I'm not sure if that means they're not running Leaf Blade, or if they're not running Close Combat, but either way, doesn't really matter. Side Shock will be taken out the Gallade. We've got a charge move loaded on our Tapu Bulu, and Tapu Bulu is definitely more attack weighted than this for Alligator, so we can win CMP. Doesn't really matter if they were running Ice Beam in the end, because Grass Knot takes out for Alligator, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into next game, we see Swampert in the lead once again. So gonna say swap into the Tapu Lele, and this time the opponent is choosing to stay in, so that's fine with me. I'm gonna no shield the first move here, Hydro Cannon won't take us out, and it won't put us into Mudshot farm damage range either. Hopefully Nature's Madness will grab a shield because that also won't KO a Swampert, but the opponent does use their shield there. They bank a ton of energy, but we do make it to another Nature's Madness. So what this will do is basically put them into Volt Switch farm damage range, and hopefully before the opponent makes it to back-to-back -back charge moves. The opponent throws on really poor timing there, so we get a full Volt Switch in for free. Shadow Ball connects, it does big damage, but we do get that next Volt Switch through before they can throw a Surf, and then they come in with Cobalion, so makes sense they don't really want to take the energy on the Swampert, knowing it would lose CMP, but we make it to another Nature's Madness here. The opponent going to fully sacrifice the Cobalion, and the opponent obviously just not reading that we got Tapu Bulu in the back. It's game over for the Swampert, they recognize that straight away, so they just concede the match there. So GG's to the opponent there, into next game we've got Steelix in the lead, so of course gonna say swap into my Tapu Lele, and this is either gonna be a Psychic Fangs or a Breaking Swipe, either way it is resistant damage, they go for the Psychic Fangs there, obviously not dealing much damage at all, but what it does do is unfortunately means that they will only have to tank one charge move or just shield it up, and then go for a full Shadow Claw farm down before we make it to the next charge move there, I think if I went straight Side Shock maybe I could have made it to the back to back, but I didn't go for that, and now of course we only make it to one move, now at this point I'm going to let the first First move go through, they go for Hydro Cannon, that does big damage, but I'm thinking I probably should be able to take them out in two more Volt Switches, and they won't be able to Shadow Claw farm me down, and we do just barely get that farm down, I'm going to swap out straight away here, save that energy, I'm thinking it's probably going to be double water in the back, so in this case, Tapu Bulu is going to be very good up against their back line, they go for Psychic Fangs immediately, we are going to over farm here, throwing the Grass Knot just before they make it to Psychic Fangs number two, Grass Knot is going to be no shielded by the opponent, at this point, I'm still not going to shield because I feel like it's going to be Polyrath in the back, in which case I need to save the shield for the potential Icy Wind. We're going to go for another Grass Knot once again, over farming as much as possible, and it is going to be Polyrath in the back, so we're going straight for Nature's Madness here, but unfortunately my Tapu Koko is very low in health, and the opponent does correctly no shield the first move. Very smart because we debuff their defense. If they shielded that up, we then just go for a Thunderbolt, and that takes out the Polyrath, but really well played by the opponent. They can go for a full counter farm down, and they're able to take that game. Game. So GG's to the opponent there, much better lead matchup for me, the opponent's going to say swap into Skeledurge, but because they swap out, I'm actually going to not throw a charge move at all, and this allows me to get a full Volt Switch in for free, now at this point I can bait with a Nature's Madness, and even if they do no shield, I will outpace them to the next charge move, and I can fire off a second Nature's Madness, and this should be grabbing a shield or taking them out, it does grab a shield, at this point I don't need switch advantage, all three of my Pokemon are going to do very well up against the Gulslord, and we put them into range, where we can just get the full Astonish farm down. 
Now they put, he's going to wait out the Switch Hog before coming in with their Gulls Lord. I can go for a Nature's Madness. I'm going to throw on the CMP tie with either a Sludge Bomb or a Brutal Swing or a Crunch. And the opponent is going to use their final shield. So at this point, I'm not going to shield here unless it is a Sludge Bomb. I live even a Brutal Swing. They swap into their own Tapu. It is a Tapu Coco though. And we can just safely shield this up. I can then over farm this matchup. The opponent falls into a Brave Bird there. I definitely wasn't expecting that. But either way, we can now just full send a Grass Knot. This will easily take them out after the debuff to their defense and I will make it to a nature's madness the opponent recognizing it was game over so they just concede the match there so GG's to the opponent there, internet is going to see Verizion in the lead, so we've got two better answers. So I'm going to say swap into my Tapu Lele, going to no shield the first charge move here, just going to be a Leaf Blade, although that does about half our health, which is quite ridiculous, considering Leaf Blade is a 35 energy charge move. Also Verizion, not exactly the most attack weighted Pokemon ever. At this point, we grab a shield advantage, they're going to outpace me to the next charge move, unfortunately, so I will just let that go through. Happy to take that shield advantage, it's pretty clear that they don't have the best response to a Fairy type, so we're just going to come in with the Tapu Bulu, and because we've debuffed their defense, this definitely should be enough damage to take them out. The opponent, no shields, it does take them out, and then they come in with a Jellicent, so I don't know what their third Pokemon is, but it's clearly not very good up against Fairy types, as they come in with a Water type up against my Tapu Bulu. Unfortunately, Grass Knot doesn't quite take them out there, and I will have to throw another Charge move, so at this point, I will just go for Nature's Madness. Of course, both would take them out from this range. So if the opponent does choose to try and swap and make a catch, we are at least going to debuff their defense. But they come in with a Toxicroak and they make a huge mistake here. They didn't need to throw this. This is resisted damage. We can live it. We can now fire off the Nature's Madness. If they let this go through, we swap into Tapu Coco. We get the farm down. If they shield it, we then come in with the Tapu Coco and then land another Nature's Madness. Either way, it was game over for the opponent as soon as they throw on the CMP. And I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there, into the next game we see Skeletor Dirge in the lead once again, so this time I'm thinking, do I shield? No, I'm going to no shield, they full send the Shadow Ball, and already it's not looking too good for us, we're going to come in with the Tapu Lele, I know this is just going to be disarming voice, but honestly, I can't afford to get too low because I've got Tapu Bulu in the back, so now we're going to over farm here, go for a side shot just before they make it to the next disarming voice, and the opponent is actually going to shield that up there, and they will just barely outpace me to the next charge, but since they shield that, I feel like maybe they are weak to fairy in the back, so I shield it myself, of course, they still got a shield advantage, but it doesn't really matter for me because they've got a Togekiss in the back. So Nature's Madness does go unshielded. This is game over. I, I should just top left here. But instead, we're going to fire off a Nature's Madness on the CMP tie. This is going to be CMP with an Aerial Ace because it does. it is just seven charms to get there. So unfortunately, Aerial Ace will be taking out the Tapu Bulu and we do end up losing that game. So GG's to the opponent there, not a great time up against these Skeletor Doge leads, but into next battle, an also fairly awkward lead here, but the opponent is going to have to force in an Earthquake to take us out there, but this is a CMP tie, and it takes 9 wing attacks to make it to the Earthquake, so doesn't matter what this is, even if it's a Sand Tomb, it's not going to do that much damage, it's just an Aerial Ace there, so quite interesting, you don't typically see Glide Score with Aerial Ace in the Ultra League, so maybe they're running Night Slash and Aerial Ace, which is why they didn't go for the Earthquake, but top tip, if you're not running Earthquake, and you need to land an Earthquake in the lead matchup, at least pretend you've got it and farm up to a potential Earthquake there, because that made my life very easy to no shield, we can now just barely make it to a Nature's Madness, up against Shadow for Alligator, coming in, debuffing their defense and the opponent doesn't even farm once again to an ice beam so i can just safely no shield it is a crunch there which is actually better than if they go for a hydro cannon so that's fine with me we're now going to go for the nature's madness grabbing the final shield from the opponent and then swapping making a catch onto my tapu lele and this game is certainly over they go for icy wind there doesn't really matter dropping my attack i'm just going to drop their defense and honestly even with a drop def uh, dropped attack nature's madness still going to take out the polyrath there but what it does do is set up a huge Shadow Claw farm down for the Shadow for Alligator. So definitely not playing the best in this battle, but it doesn't really matter. As we can just safely double shield my Tapu Bulu. There's really no point in the opponent throwing here, but they are going to throw anyways. They're going to make it look like it was close, but we can now fire off another Nature's Madness. Of course, Grass Knot is super effective, but this is a Nature's Madness showcase. So we take out the for Alligator and I'm able to take that game. 
So GG's to the opponent there into the next game. We see another Scaled Dirge in the lead. So when we no shielded, it was a Shadow Ball. When we shield, it is a Disarming Voice. This time I'm going to no shield here and the opponent is going to bait with a Disarming Voice. Now, of course, this still isn't great because they can just shield up the Thunderbolt here. I do full send the Thunderbolt just because I'm only making it to one charge move and the opponent actually lets that go through. So that is good news for me. They're probably just going to blind throw a Shadow Ball. So I'm definitely going to respect the damage here. Go for the Astonished Farm down and let's see what they've got in the back. They've actually got a second farm type that makes no sense here in a meta that's so full of water types and dragon types but it is what it is and now at this point this isn't looking too good for us we are going to be down a shield i will outpace them to the next charge move here so i'm just going to throw these charge moves straight away i actually go for nature's madness once again just to drop their defense so that way we can actually take them out with either a nature's madness or a grass knot from my tapu bulu i tried to catch a move there but i'm not able to do so they do correctly over farm and they've got polyrath in the bag so if we we were somehow able to get rid of the Charizard there we might have been able to win that game but unfortunately really well played by the opponent they choose to over farm and they're able to just very comfortably win this game in the end Scald will be taken out the Tapu Lele and unfortunately we do lose that game but GG's to the opponent there into the next game a much better lead matchup for me as we lead into Como O the opponent is going to choose to stay in initially here and that's absolutely fine with me they then swap into Shadow Venusaur honestly I wasn't 100% sure what to do there I wasn't sure if maybe I should go for a Nature's Madness first uh, sorry Nature's Madness first before swapping into my Tapu Lele but in the end I just banked a ton of energy we can win this if we go down a shield but even if the opponent double shields here I think I'm going to put them into range where we can just take them out back with the Tapu Coco so either way, it's not the end of the world here. Going to go for a side shock. Is the opponent going to shield this up? The opponent chooses to no shield that, which is fine with me. The opponent is now going to come back in with their combo O, which is quite an interesting play here. Of course, no shields remaining, but they go for a break break. Everything they throw is going to be double resisted, and then they swap into Galarian Stompfist. So at this point, things are looking pretty decent for us. I can tank two rock sides, although it will get me fairly low here, but they can't mud shot farm me down as it is resisted. And of course, Earthquake also resisted, so no point in throwing that. They're actually going to shield the first charge move there, which is fine. I'm going to be able to make it to a second Grass Knot here, although if the opponent does throw straight away, I'm definitely not making it to a third. So we go for Grass Knot number two, getting them into the yellow health range, which still going to be a bit of work for us to take them out here, as we've only got resisted charge moves to throw, but we do have a lot of energy on both Pokemon, actually. So we're going to wait out the Switch Clock, come in with the Tapu Lele, go straight for the Nature's Madness here. This won't take them out here, but what it will do is debuff their defense, and the opponent is going to bank a decent amount of energy there we come back in with the tapu coco honestly i should have farmed two back-to-back -back charge moves we don't nature's madness obviously takes them out there and the opponent can fire off a charge move but it is just a rock side so at this point i'm gonna go for the bm undercharging a thunderbolt which is double resisted but of course at one hp that will take out the stunfisk and i'm able to take that game so GG's to the opponent there, Tapu Coco is a Galarian Stompfist counter confirmed, obviously not, that was just one HP, but I had to say it. But into the next battle, we're going to see another Pidgeot in the lead. They say swap into Annihilate, so this time I'm thinking it might be double fighting in the back. So this time we, we do come in with the Tapu Lele here, expecting that it will be a Polyrath in the back. So at this point, the opponent goes for a Night Slash there. They were, they baited with the first Night Slash, but then they just throw the second one straight away, which is fine with me, as it is only neutral damage. We're taking double resisted counter damage here, so that was never going to threaten a shield. And now now we can win the one shield scenario going straight side shock they're going to come back in with the pidgeot and that's fine with me i will make it to the nature's madness and nature's madness of course is going to drop their defense it also does about half their health which is very nice they get a huge farm down but it doesn't really matter too much as i come as i can come in with my tapu coco they full send the brave bird they swap into polyrath so i'm just going to go straight for the nature's madness this should be grabbing the final shield from the opponent and now we can swap into our tapu bulu and this game should be wrapped up by now I'm going to shield the first charge move here. Doesn't really matter if I shield this move or if I shield a... Uh, Brave Bird or a Feather Dance in the end game, but either way, we're going to go for the Nature's Madness, take another Polyrath, and I will be able to make it to another Nature's Madness up against the Pidgeot, and from this range, it will be taken out the Pidgeot, and I'm able to take that game.
So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know, and as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your support even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said thank you all so much for watching today's video and i hope you have a great rest of your day